what's going on guys. I'm Aaron from PhoneDog.com and when you think of Samsung and think of Motorola, what do you think of? Well for me personally, I think of Android phones. The Motorola Atrix 4G announced a few weeks ago, available on AT&T now, the Samsung Galaxy S 4G shown off at Mobile World Congress, available now as well on T-Mobile. Both of these are pretty equipped devices. One gigahertz dual core uh, NVIDIA Tegra 2 processor, five megapixel camera, four inch display, and a biometric fingerprint reader to boot. That dual core processor definitely pretty powerful over here. On this hand, Samsung Galaxy S 4G available on T-Mobile, one gigahertz Hummingbird processor, five megapixel camera, Android 2.2, a nice little powerhouse, four inch Super AMOLED display, a nice little powerhouse over here. Which one's the best? Well, you know what we do in the phone dog house when we're trying to figure that out. We do a dog fight. Motorola Atrix 4G, Samsung Galaxy S. We're going to figure it out. But first, special thanks to our friends at Best Buy. They're hooking us up with two of these, two of these, one, two, three. That's four for use in our One Paw Bandit giveaway. So when you go into Best Buy Mobile with either of these devices, you know, you want to buy one. No rebates, no paperwork, no waiting eight to ten weeks. Paperwork? No paperwork, waiting eight to ten weeks. You walk out the door right then getting the after rebate price. Enough of that, let's get into it. Everybody's favorite part, browser, and of course this is a fair comparison because both of these devices have Android 2.2, so you're gonna get flash capability on both of these so you can get an idea. Actually, phone dog's already there. So you can get an idea of uh, the pinch to zoom responsiveness on both of these with flash advertisements actually running. So this one's loading up phone dog right now. This one's going to load it up pretty quickly and we'll see what pinch to zoom looks like on both. Now you'll notice that first of all the capacitive buttons are different down here. It's menu home back and search on the uh, on the I'm sorry they're not. Samsung Galaxy S 4G, Motorola Atrix they're the same. Menu home back and search. You'll see little differences between the designs. But one thing about Android that you'll notice is uh, the design, uh, the button configuration very different. For example, on the Nexus S, the menu button is, uh, isn't where it is on these devices, and the home button's all the way over to the right, etc. So there are some differences between the devices. So you can see this is loading back up, and we'll see here. New window, windows, so you can see that the way, they, the, way the menu structure is configured, a little bit different, not too much, but we'll start with the Galaxy S4G. So there's the phone dog page, fully loaded. And you can see pinch to zoom, I was actually very impressed with how fast, if you saw the review of this device, incredibly inf impressed with how fast the pinch to zoom is on this device. I mean, it's, you know, super fast, single core processor, but still, you see a little bit of a uh, little bit of lag there for a second. But I've been very pleased, very fast. And let's get these turned on. Let's see, come on, we'll wait for that to load. We'll do the uh, the pinch to zoom on this. So not to say, you know, definitely definitely quick on this one as well. So not to say that it's uh, got a huge edge, but I think the Galaxy S is a little bit faster. Let's see what's causing this. Alright, there we go. Uh, sorry, I just reloaded the page, but you can still see, I just wanted to give you a fair comparison between the advertisements. And you can still see pinch to zoom, very responsive, very fast on the, uh, on the Galaxy S 4G as well. That's it in portrait, that's it in landscape. You can still see moving very quickly. Let's take a look at the Motorola Atrix as well. And a uh, little, little bit more laggy, but not, not anything terrible. You can see a little slower jumping back into the portrait mode. Well, they're about the same, I guess. But uh, I'd give the browser edge to the Galaxy S 4G just for the pinch to zoom response time. It's a little bit faster than the Motorola Atrix 4G. So as I said, the uh, Galaxy S 4G comes with Inception instead of Avatar. Uh, on this device and we'll take a look at that. Now the interesting thing with this is when you did it on the Vibrant, you clicked on the movie, it automatically loaded easy as pie. Now with this one it requires a little bit of a, an additional step and a little bit more work. You click on it now and you see that uh, it sends me to the Media Hub and in order to access it I click on Inception down here and uh, because I'm logged into the Media Hub it says complete action using you know let's say video player and it'll start the video up but uh, you know, uh, well, let me go into this so you can see it. So you can see that's what it looks like. But when you start into it for the first time, you have to actually log into the Media Hub. So not a big deal. I know how to use it. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. But for those people that are migrating up for the first time, people that are new to smartphones, they're going to click on Inception, saying, "Hey, I got a free movie." It's going to load the Media Hub, and they're going to say, "Wait a second, you know, what is this? Am I paying for this movie?" So a little bit of an unnecessary step. 
from Samsung. Not to say that the Media Hub isn't cool. You know, you can see you have quite a few movie options, and then you have a movie store and a TV store, so we can jump in just to get an idea of what it looks like. So it's a nice store and something that's very useful, but I just don't see the need to uh, divert people in. It's kind of this overly gimmicky sales pitch to divert people in to the Media Hub in order to uh, to view Inception. You can still see it from the SD card, micro SD card, but uh, you know, still, and you can access it from files, but not as easy. Let's take a look at the, uh, the cameras on these devices. Five megapixel cameras on both, no flash on this one. There is a flash on the Atrix 4G though, and before we do that, I want to tell you, since we covered a feature on this one, I want to make it fair and cover a feature on the Atrix 4G. It has a biometric fingerprint scanner, which is super cool. Instead of doing, you know, a pen or drawing something when you want to unlock the device, you can use your fingerprints to unlock it uh, as well, which is a cool thing. I've actually been in the AT&T store and heard people say they want the device just because of that reason. So we'll load it up here. I do have a fingerprint profile. Let's swipe that to continue. And then we'll choose one, two, three, four. Or one, two, three, seven. That works. And we'll hit OK. And then you can see, I don't know if that shows on camera, but there's just a, a number of issues with lag on this device. It just kills me. Okay, so we'll see here, you know, swipe down with my finger, and it bypasses everything, bypasses the unlock screen, and, uh, and everything, and lets me in. So, I like that feature. I think that's pretty cool. And, uh, you know, if that's something that interests you, Motorola Atrix is your, uh, your device. Let's take a look at those cameras, as I was saying before I got sidetracked by that. Five megapixel cameras on both of these devices, and let's bring in, hmm, let's bring in the G2 for, uh, for comparison so we can get an idea of what the cameras can do. We'll see no physical camera buttons on either of these devices. So we'll bring up the keyboard here on the G2, press and hold to focus. Bring that one in, and then we'll hold this one out. And I will say the Motorola Atrix 4G's picture, I think it's better than, I don't know why that one's not focusing. I think is uh, better than the 8 megapixel Motorola shooters like the Droid uh, the Droid X. I think they've improved the camera for some reason. I don't know why that's not. Wait for that to focus. Let's see what's going on here. There we go. Okay, so we'll take a look at these pictures. And this is an unofficial test, obviously, you know. These pictures will vary depending on your use and depending on the lighting. I mean, obviously, the, the lighting here is pretty bright because I have the, the lights behind for the phones. But that's what those look like. So you can see, you know, to me, between those, it's a tough call. I mean, and both of these are on the devices, but I'd have to give the narrow edge to the Galaxy S 4G just because either the blacks are blacker over here. It's a little bit, uh, and this is certainly good, don't get me wrong, but a little bit washed out over here and uh, a little bit granular around the letters. I don't know if you can see that in the camera, but it's still a great picture, don't get me wrong. I think you'd be happy with either of these, and the benefit to the Atrix is when you get in those low-lit situations, it has the flash, which may save you as opposed to uh, something like this, which doesn't have the flash. So, something to keep in mind, but in terms of just day-to-day -day picture quality, I'd go with the Samsung Galaxy S 4G. Quadrant Standard Time, let's see which one takes the cake, and while that's running, I'll tell you a little bit about the call quality on both of these devices. You know, I've been working with both of these, the Galaxy S 4G, for a little bit longer than the uh, than the Atrix 4G. Actually, is that true? Yeah, that's true. I have been, and I've been impressed with both. I think the earpiece is very loud on both of these devices. Motorola has always had a great track record with earpiece volume and quality, and it continues over in the Atrix 4G. Sounds, you know, everything sounds good. My callers appreciated the sound, had no issues whatsoever there. And uh, you know, and when I when I took both of these to Dead Spot, the T-Mobile Dead Spot I usually go to is in North Charlotte, and the AT&T Dead Spot that I usually go to is uh, or one of the ones that I go to is in West Charlotte. And uh, both of those, you know, it was able to hold the call. It was very choppy to the point where I couldn't actually understand the caller. And it, you know, we went through these periods of silence, but uh, I was very impressed with the fact that it didn't drop the call. Now this one is in, while the other one's running. We'll take a look at this one. 980 on the Samsung Galaxy S 4G. So, you know, again, these are day-to-day -day scores, but 980 on the Galaxy S 4G. And then on this one, 2,837 
uh, on the Atrix 4G, so that, you know, dual-core processor, I mean, it, it slams the competition away in terms of speed tests, uh, like Quadrant Standard, but that said, you know, day-to-day -day use is something different, and, uh, you know, between all of these devices, unless you're just hardcore gaming on your phone, I really don't think it makes that much of a difference. Still, you do, you know, it did win, though. Let's take a look at speed test, get both of these loaded up on Charlotte, and we'll wait for the server list to come in on this one. And as soon as it does, begin test. Bam. Now, this is an area HSPA Plus device, and this is the first T-Mobile HSPA Plus device that supports 21 megabits per second. So it's, you know, the T-Mobile's fastest cell phone, or at least the cell phone is able uh, of achieving the fastest speeds on T-Mobile. This is an HSPA Plus or AT&T's 4G, second 4G device as well, although the speeds, I haven't seen 4G speeds at all. Uh, to date, if you look back to all of my videos, all of the speeds pretty much are terrible like this. If you look at this, 4 megabits per second, upload 1.4 megabits per second. <laughs> on this one, 1.4 megabits per second on the download, and 0.15 on the upload. So pretty poor on AT&T's side. You know, we can jump up here and see, okay, it's a little faster here, 2.5, 2.6. You look at this, this is rocking it out at almost 5 megabits per second, 4.66. 2.94. So, in terms of speed tests, like actual network speed tests, T-Mobile gets the win by a landslide. So, you know, something to keep in mind, uh, HSPA Plus, T-Mobile's HSPA Plus works very well here. AT&T's uh, HSPA Plus, if it's even, you know, available yet, is just, uh, it's not, not to standard, let's put it that way, putting it nicely. So we have to declare a winner in this dogfight, you know, and as always, for me, it's always hard between these devices because it's totally dependent on what you want. If you want, you know, a better camera with a flash, go with the, uh, or better camera, you know, go with the Galaxy S 4G. If you want the flash, go with the Atrix 4G. If you want, you know, a, uh, a thinner device, go with the Galaxy S 4G. If you want Moto Blur, go with the Atrix 4G. I mean, it's totally dependent on what you want, but, you know, winner does have to be declared. And just based on our testing today, I have to give it, you know, again, by a slight margin, which everybody makes fun of me for saying that, but a slight margin to the Motorola Atrix 4G. And let me tell you why. I love the Galaxy S 4G, and had it been priced at the $149.99 price point that they told us at Mobile World Congress, I'd recommend it much more than I do now. You have the MyTouch 4G and the G2, two very powerful devices on T-Mobile that are also $199, and I'd recommend the MyTouch every time in a heartbeat over the, uh, over the Galaxy S 4G. So if it was $149, that'd be cool, but at $199, it just competes with two devices that are, in my opinion, a little bit better. The Motorola Atrix 4G whizzes by in speed tests, uh, has an awesome spec, she uh, spec sheet, and then has a, uh, has a great fingerprint scanner on the back. Where this one suffers, lag. It is laggy in certain places. It's laggy when you unlock, this, unlock the screen laggy when you're typing on the keyboard at times, and it's not just my device. I've gone into three AT&T stores and experienced the same thing with three different Motorola Atrix demo units. So it's pretty frustrating. You know, if you can get past it, if you don't notice it, more power to you, but I definitely notice it. That said, speed tests are awesome. Uh, network speed tests leave a little bit to be desired, but the Atrix is the winner. Much more coverage to come on PhoneDog.com with both of these devices, the Galaxy S 4G, the Motorola Atrix 4G, so be sure to keep it locked on the site. Follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash phone dog, or like us on Facebook, if I can say it right. We're giving away prizes. We always give away stuff every couple of weeks, and there's a big one in the works, so be sure to check it out and keep it locked on the Facebook page, facebook.com slash phone dog. Follow me on Twitter is what I meant to say. Follow me on Twitter, phone dog underscore Aaron. Ask me any questions. You know, you thought you think this one should have won. You think I'm smart for choosing this one. Hey, let me know, phone dog underscore Aaron. Thanks so much for watching. Keep it locked on the site for continuing dogfights, reviews, and more. And as always, we'll see you next time.